In today's reading of Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh, we continue with Book 1, Laying the Foundation. This is Chapter 4, Section 2. What about prayer and God's will? Friend, I'd like to talk about prayer. The intention of prayer has always been to make the out here be what we think it should be, or better. So what is the will of God? I do not understand how the will of God is my will. It's all stirred up for me. It does not fit together. David, you have some good questions. The Bible says, Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Book of Matthew, chapter 7, section 7. The law of karma basically states, As you sow, so shall you reap. No matter how you take it, It all points to the fundamental belief that giving and receiving are the same. There is a part in the song of prayer where he refuses, where he refers to a ladder. When you are really bound into the world of form, you cannot help but pray for the world of form. This is the lower rung of the ladder. Help me. Help my child. Help my aunt, Martha, on her trip to India. Help to end world hunger and poverty. If you believe in the reality of the world around you, you cannot help but pray like that. It is not wrong to pray in that way but there are higher realms of prayer. Help me see this differently is a prayer the Course offers in many different ways because it brings it all back to being a perceptual problem. My perception is distorted. I need another way to look at this. I need to see peace instead of this. Prayer is your desire. If your desire is single and whole, your prayer, of course, is always answered. If your prayer is for God and nothing but God, then the state that you receive is a state of peace and joy. You may have it tainted with desire for other things. For example, Marianne Williamson puts it something like this. Do I want peace or do I want him to call? It is a good example because sometimes getting a call from him seems more important than peace of mind. At those levels of desire, you can start to see how important it is to get in touch with unconscious beliefs. How important it is to start to get in touch with what the ego's beliefs are and what its purpose is and say, Hey, I do not want those. I am not going to keep plugging this appliance in. I am not going to keep following this ego because I want peace. Who wants pain and misery and not happiness? That kind of addresses the topic of prayer. It certainly gets away from the prayers for specifics.
A lot of prayers, even among unity and other new age thinking, are tied in with abundance. Praying and using the mind to visualize the kind of life you want. This prayer for specifics is not the highest form, but it is more like the middle rung. If you visualize and then experience something, you hold it in mind and it seems to come. That is a powerful experience. It points to how powerful the mind is. It is a definite experience that flies in the face of I am a weak little helpless nobody and I am at the whim of the victim of everything in the world. But what the song of prayer does and the course in general is to say Okay, now you are beginning to learn that your mind has power and you actually can seem to manifest things. It seems that way. The script is written and you are still watching, just watching the past. But it seems as if the things you want are coming to you. Once you can see that your mind is powerful, how about peace of mind, enlightenment and salvation as your only goal? Take that powerful mind you are beginning to realize you have and give it to the Holy Spirit. Start putting peace as your only goal. Peace is an abstract kind of purpose that may be hard to get a grasp on. How am I at peace when I am with my brother or my sister? Peace and judgment do not go together. Peace and its interpretation definitely give a lot of experience. But those are the higher rungs. Instead of praying for specifics like please give me this, please give me that, please end world hunger, please have it be a hot sunny day when we are having our family picnic, hold this goal of abstract peace in mind and allow and accept. Then you do not have as much of an investment in the form. The peace comes because you are not invested in the form. You start to feel so content as you ascend up that ladder that nothing is seen as a sacrifice. Those things that seemed so important, that seemed like a really big deal. The joy starts to be so intense. The well starts to bubble up inside so much that you wonder how you could have thought those things could bring you happiness and peace. But at the time, you could not see that. Aside from prayer, you also mentioned will. God's will for his son, for us, is perfect happiness. I have heard people say, well, it must be God's will that people starve. But God's will is for perfect happiness. God's will is not known in this world. The world is made to cover over and make up an alien will, the ego, apart from God's will. And that is where pain and fear and misery come in. Free will is when the mind has accepted the atonement and is healed. Then the will is free because the Father 
and the Son's will are one, and the Son knows this. The Son knows His will is not apart from His Father's. Jesus knew this as a fact. <laughs> 